Hey guys, what is up? This is Swift here, and today I have a very interesting video uh, guide for you, but uh, it might not really affect you, it might, because uh, what I'm going to do today is to upgrade my friend's uh, MacBook Pro, uh, it's a mid-2010 edition, uh, upgrade the hard drive into an SSD, as well as increase the RAM to 8 gigs. Now, uh, just some things to take note of, the RAM of this model, in particular, supports up to 16 gigabytes, no matter what Apple says. And it is proven by a lot of things, and I'll show you a screenshot as well that I put in a 8 gig module, and it actually reads the 8 gigabytes of a RAM. Uh, so it gave me a total of 10 because the one stick is 2 gigs and the other is 8 gigs, so it gives a total of 10. Uh, the only problem is that uh, you have to do some special things because they do not produce. You cannot purchase any uh, 8 8500 um, speed or 1066 megahertz RAM. Uh, that is 8 gigs unless you buy from the OWC memory I believe they are the only ones that sell 1066 megahertz uh, 8 gigabyte RAM specifically for the uh, MacBook Pro um, so there is a tool for you to actually uh, edit the speed uh, memory clock speeds which I will show you uh, you will basically need to have boot cam etc and I also guide you through the process of upgrading your hard drive into an SSD uh, so do stay tuned for that. So first thing, what you want to do uh, is that you want to have everything, all the back cover removed. So it's simply removing all these screws around the edges. And it's very simple. You just have to push it open. So I left two screws here. The three screws here are unique in the sense that they are the longer kind of screws, which I'll show you. Do make sure that you have the uh, a two of the right size, because if not, uh, it's going to be very difficult for you to actually uh, unscrew these screws and uh, I do recommend using this set that I've got from Amazon and they're very very cheap um, I'll put a two I'll actually do an unboxing and overview of this as well I'm not sure which will be uploaded first but yeah uh, this set of twos I'll actually just put the link to that in the description you can buy them it's very cheap about seven bucks seven to eight dollars and you get a whole set of uh, bits that works perfectly well for electronic stuff so once you have everything out you just have to lift it from the back here where there's there's a little groove for you to pull out and then you're gonna see uh, my very very dirty uh, MacBook Pro or at least my friend's one and uh, yeah the few things you gonna take note uh, RAM is over here hard drive is over here right RAM 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 RAM, hard drive. Uh, very simply, uh, you have to. You can just remove whatever it is that you want to change, and then just put in the new stuff. But uh, do take note because the RAM. Uh, one very important thing about the RAM is that uh, the RAM, you will have to. Give me a moment. You have to ensure that uh, one of the sticks inside is 1066 first before you can actually do all the updating thing. Because if you were to put two different RAMs or two of your new RAMs inside which are not supported the Mac would not boot because it does not have this automatic down clocking thing when it doesn't recognize both RAM whereas if it actually recognize one of the RAM it will down clock the other memory module to the lower clock speed uh, and it will render it like um, okay to work which is very very weird but that's how it works and so what we're going to do first is to actually take out one of the piece of RAM and then we're going to put in our new 4 gig module here. So uh, to take off the RAM is very simple. You just push out this pin here and you will just slide on. You do not need any force at all and you just have to take it out. Right? So this is my, this is actually my uh, 10, uh, this is my 8 gigabit module that I was trying with. Yeah, there we go. You can see that 8 gigs. Not sure. Yeah, there we go. 8 gigabytes. Right. So it works actually. I'll show you a screenshot in a while. And uh, you do not need to buy uh, what they call Mac specific RAM. All you have to do is actually down clock it. And this is the RAM that I'm actually going to use. These are the RAM I'm going to use, anyways. Um, let's see, you can focus it. Yeah, this is actually a 4 gig, uh, 1333 megahertz RAM, right? All right, so uh, that's all you need to know. So you're just going to have to put one in. 
doesn't matter which slot but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it in the second slot so that it will be easier for me to change it later once I uh, flash the, the drive so same thing push it out then you can actually slide the the module out well that was really really difficult the second one is a pain in the ass uh, but I finally took it out okay so I'm just gonna put it one side hopefully I did not damage it or anything like that because I was fumbling a lot of it so second piece so same thing if you put in uh, make sure that it aligns with the long and the short side you will be able to see it from your view uh, from my view rather and uh, again so all you have to do is push all the way in and once it's in you just push it down and you're locked in place similar i'm just going to use back the same ram just now um, all you have to do is to push in at an angle at first right and then just push it down then you're done so you're just gonna have to put back your um, cover uh, so but but you realize that okay i've actually only used um one of the four gigabytes of ram so now we should have six gigs and um, you're going to wonder why and I'll show you why we, we are doing this. Basically, we just want to edit the um, clock speed and down clock the four gigs one that we have is a 1033 megahertz one into uh, 10, 1067 or 1066, I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, we want to down clock that and uh, I'll be back uh, in a while with the tutorial on how to down clock it right uh, i'm very sorry i i cannot go through with you the process while i was doing it on my macbook pro uh the reason why is because when i was installing boot cam and all this stuff uh i ran into a lot of problems and uh it took me quite some time and by the time i got to flashing the ram i have totally forgotten that i was actually supposed to record the process while i was doing it but anyway i'm just going to go through with you now um, it should be the same thing and uh, the thing is that if you are using your Mac to actually want to flash the RAM uh, you make sure you have boot cam because this program only runs on Windows and uh, did, do note that this program you have to pay for it because the demo version uh, does not support writing to the RAM does not support writing or modifying the settings it only allows you to read so you have to purchase it so in the end you have to consider the cost of it whether or not uh, the rams that you're about to buy plus the cost of the software whether is it going to be more expensive uh, than actually buying rams that are immediately compatible out of the box such as the owc rams that they they guarantee you that will work in your macbook pro so you have to of course calculate the cost yourself and then judge whether or not to buy the software and then uh, flash the ram yourself uh, another thing to take note is that uh, if you you have a you do not have boot cam or anything like that, you can actually use another Windows uh, laptop. Uh, definitely can use that and then insert the RAM that you want to flash into the laptop temporarily, and then you're gonna flash it from there. But do note that some motherboards do not allow you to actually flash; they lock the different slots so it does not support uh, writing to the ram itself so you have to take note about that the the program will have a pop-up uh, when you start it to let you know whether or not the uh, motherboard supports writing or if the ram itself is locked etc so you will know by then so all right so what you're going to see is that once you start the program if you paid for it uh, you, you you of course activate it and so on uh, what you're going to do is that you click read and then you're going to find the RAM that corresponds to the uh, new RAM that you have. So for example, if I press read and then at 53H here, uh, and that uh, this corresponds to my new RAM, right? Uh, for example, at first it was 2 gigs, but the new stick that you put in it is 8 gigs, for example. So this will be the RAM that I want to flash is at 53H. Now you're going to remember that and then you click editor over here. And then this screen will pop up and what you want to do now is to select a profile. Now at least for myself, I selected a profile 
a default profile for 1066 megahertz frequency and uh everything is done for you already now of course if the easier way is to actually uh, uh use this and uh, but uh the compatibility wise might not be perfect because the timings etc are unique to each uh specific memory module and how how it is actually made so there might be some issues here but so far as for me uh there wasn't any issue there uh, so i use the default uh, profile otherwise what you can do is basically just change this mean sd ram cycle time to 15 and then leave the rest as default of your ram's own default it should work as well but uh, I did this for, if you want to know, DDR3-1066G. And then you just press next. And then what you're going to do is that you're going to press write the new SPD data to the EEP ROM. And then uh, you're going to press apply to the selected SPDE ROM on device. For example, if we mentioned earlier is at 53H, you're going to select 53H. And then you just press apply and then it will flash all the new stuff to the RAM and it should work and perform as a 1066 uh, uh, megahertz RAM and the MacBook Pro will actually read it and you can take off um, the old RAM and then put in your other new RAM in as well. Uh, one thing you want to take note uh, in case you, you want to fall back on something you can actually dump all this data uh, via save dump and then you save it somewhere and uh, if for ha if if it happens that uh, your f your flash failed or your ram doesn't work all of a sudden you can actually fall back on this you put back the ram you flash it back to its original state and you are good to go again right then you can try to do other things to find out what went wrong so otherwise, once this is done, uh, you put back all the RAMs, etc. And then you're good to go. Uh, I'll just show you some of the results to prove to you that I've actually inserted both RAMs that aren't 1066 rated into the MacBook Pro and it works. Alright, so uh, what you're seeing right now is the results. Again, I'm very, very sorry that I cannot tell you uh, the step-by-step -step through of uh, Typhoon uh, Burner. Uh, but uh, of course... Uh, the main reason I already said earlier is that um, while well, going through the Windows process of installing bootcam and stuff like that, I face quite a bit of problems because I'm not a Mac expert or anything like that. I, I have absolutely no idea what I was doing. And uh, when I got it working, I just went all the way and I forgotten to record it. So I had to do a, a after tutorial kind of thing, which you just saw earlier. But the main thing that you want to take note is that, yes, uh, you will have to pay for the Typhoon Burner. Because the later few uh, demo that you have seen is that uh, they do not support writing to the uh, RAM itself. So you got to see if it is worth it. Uh, if you purchase the OWC RAMs that are ready uh, or whatever RAMs that are actually ready uh, flashed or rather uh, rated at the 1067, 1066 megahertz speed. Uh, whether is it cheaper than buying a 1333 or 1600 megahertz uh, RAM and then flashing it using a paid software of Typhoon Burner but otherwise uh, it will work as you can see here uh, this screen here uh, I actually do have 8 gigs of RAM and I've only flashed one of them and um, yeah so it works it works very well you don't need any special RAM uh, but you do need that special software and that software do cost quite a bit uh, especially for a single time use but you have to weigh your pros and cons so hopefully this helps you uh, if you have any questions do let me know um, leave in the comments section uh, and if you find this uh, video informative do give it a thumbs up and uh, do subscribe for more of such videos i'll see you guys again soon